Hello, I'm Lewis and this is DIY Machines, the channel where I get to show you step by step how to build awesome projects. And in today's video, I'm going to go over how to build these color e-ink paper display digital dashboards. You can customize playlists on these to show you different data at different times of the day. So you can wake up with your calendar by your side. Then the display can prepare today's weather report whilst you're washing. Helping you to choose your outfit for your day ahead. Then when you get back from work, catch up on the news with a quick glance. And then why not enjoy the charm and nostalgic photos of your family and friends for the rest of the evening. This project has been sponsored by PCBWay. I'll tell you some more about their services later on. Now, you're going to find an ever-growing catalog of plugins available, such as GitHub statistics, NASA imagery streams, and weather reports, thanks to the free and brilliant InkyPi software, which all runs on the very low cost Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, now, I really love the colorful e-paper displays used on this project because unlike a traditional screen, which emits its own light, these merely reflect the ambient light in the area just the same as a Kindle screen. I find this far less distracting and it elegantly hides the technology inside behind what appears to be a printed piece of paper and a wooden IKEA photo frame. And you can, of course, 3D print everything if you don't want to use a wooden frame. I've put a few designs online for you to download and use, as well as the Fusion 360 template file that I've created. So you can create a frame design of your own to make it truly personal. Now, to build one of these for yourself, you don't actually need that many parts. You'll need a Waveshare 7.3 inch e-ink color display its driver hat, ribbon cable, and adapter, a USB cable to power everything, some bolts, a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, and micro SD card. If you're going to house yours inside of an IKEA frame, then I recommend this one. And whether you decide to put yours inside of a wooden frame or 3D print the entire project, you're going to need some printing filament. I've done all of mine using 3D Jake's Eco PLA. If you're using the IKEA frame, then you'll need to first print out the IKEA frame front. And if you're printing any of the others, just print the style that you would like. The rest of the video's instructions is the same for both pathways which also means it's very easy to swap out the front style at a future time if you'd like to. Oh boy! Whichever frame design you choose, we can continue by taking our e-paper screen and removing the protective film from the front. This is then placed face down into the frame, ensuring that the ribbon cable passes over the cutout here at the base. We can then 3D print and install the rear cover using the first four of our M3x6mm bolts. The ribbon cable board is then fitted into place directly onto the 3D print with another four of your M3x8 bolts. 
We can then open this little connector by lifting the black bar at the back here upwards and then inserting the ribbing from the screen. Simply push this black bar downwards to lock it into place. Let's turn our attention to the Raspberry Pi next and more specifically the micro SD card which we can install the Raspberry Pi OS onto. Now I'm using the excellent and free Raspberry Pi imager. You'll find a link to download it below this video. Open it up and then we can enter a few settings. We're using the Raspberry Pi 02W, so select that here. And then you also want to choose the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, which is currently on version Trixie. Before you continue, insert the micro SD card into your computer and then you can select it here before we continue to customize our install. You'll need to choose a host name for your Pi, which will be shown on the network later. Then configure your geographical settings. Set yourself a username and password for accessing your Pi. And pre-configure the Wi-Fi connection. On the next step, ensure the SSH is enabled with password authentication so that we can connect to it headlessly later. You can skip the Raspberry Pi Connect and then write all of this to your SD card. Once this has been written and verified, you can remove the card from your computer and insert it into your Pi. Now we can attach our display hat onto our Raspberry Pi by pushing the two headers together. Now you might spot that I've already bent some pins on mine whilst working on the prototype. So be careful when you press them together and even more so if you need to take them apart later. Once pressed together, we can add the four 3D printed standoffs to sit between the two boards as you secure it to the frame using your M2.5 bolts. With the stripy side of pins facing up, you can then fit the ribbon cable between the two WaveShare boards. The USB cable can also be connected to the outside USB port of the Pi now. Both of these are held in place with the 3D printed cable clamps. One helps hold the cable against the frame and then the other one pushes it away if you need it to help stop it from tipping your frame over if you're going to be standing it on a surface. So I've been building this one to go inside of the IKEA frame and we could have put it in here a lot sooner. I've just left it out because it's a lot easier for me to film and show you how to add all of this when it's outside of the frame. I've also gone for the IKEA one because if I'd built it inside one of these frames, it's a lot deeper and harder for me to film. So let's pop this inside of the frame now and we should all be at about the same stage. So in a moment, we're going to install the Inky Pi software onto the frame to add some intelligence and color to the display. There are a few ways you can display your frame when it's ready. You can leave it resting on its edge like this, or you can 3D print and attach the rear leg, which can display it in both the portrait and landscape orientations. There's also a hanger. Print and attach one of them if you want to hang your frame in a portrait orientation and I'd recommend printing two and attaching two if you want to hang it landscape. Okay, so now we've got to the point where we can install the Inky Pi software itself and finish off our project. So make sure the SD card is inside of your Raspberry Pi and connect it to a power supply. Now on its first boot, it's likely to take three or four minutes to start up as it has some first boot tasks to complete such as generating cryptographic keys, expanding the file system, setting your localization settings and more. But once this is complete, we'll connect to it via SSH. 
And to do this, we'll need to know the IP address. So I'm going to look that up in my router tables now. And I'll show you how to do that if you have Unify devices. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you can also connect a keyboard and monitor to your Raspberry Pi and do the same steps, but directly on the Pi itself. So this is how I found the IP address. I first opened up the Unify app to access my router and then went to its devices page. In this list, I found InkyPi, the host name we set earlier and clicked it to see more details. On this page, we can find the IP address it has been assigned. Perfect. And now that we know the IP address, we can use an app such as Termius, I've linked to it below for you, to SSH to our Raspberry Pi. I'll show you that now. Type the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and press continue on this front page. In the host details pane which pops up, you can enter your username and password you chose earlier when configuring the Raspberry Pi installation. Press connect and well, then you'll be connected. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up the GitHub page for the InkyPy project and go through the installation steps on that site with you. Now, this is correct at the moment, and I can't see a reason that they're going to change, but if the site in the future is telling you something different to what's in this video that I'm recording now, then I would follow what's on that web page. But for now, we can go through it together. First, we can copy and paste this command to clone the InkyPy repository to our Pi. Once this is done, we can use the second command to open the new InkyPy folder. For the installation script, we can copy the first section and then, as these instructions explain, we need to add a WaveShare option by adding dash W followed by the model number of the screen, which is EPD7IN3E for our display. Let's send this command. So this step is going to take a while because the Raspberry Pi Zero isn't exactly the fastest Raspberry Pi out there, which is the perfect time for me to tell you about this video's sponsor, PCBWay. Now, PCBWay do do PCBs, <laughs> it's in the name but they also have a variety of other services such as CNC machining and 3D printing. Great if you wanna follow one of my projects and don't have a 3D printer of your own. In the past, I've used them to 3D print parts for train sets that I have made. Here's a little preview of those here. And they've come pristine, very well packaged and quickly. So I can highly recommend that as well as the PCB manufacturing services, where they also offer PCB assembly if you don't wanna get your hands dirty with the soldering. And right now, they're holding their 2025 Christmas promotion, which goes until the end of December. You'll find loads of coupons, free upgrades on solder masks, such as purple, matte black, and pink, and 10% off of their fully transparent 3D prints. You'll find a link to all of these offers and more down below this video. The shipping's fast, things are well packed, and their customer support has always been brilliant. So thank you again to PCBWay for sponsoring this project and for your help in the projects themselves. Still going. <laughs> After the Inky Pi installation has finished, you'll be asked if you want to restart your Raspberry Pi. Say yes. And this time, you're only gonna need to wait about one minute. After the Raspberry Pi has rebooted, your e-ink display should refresh itself to let you know which IP address or URL to visit in a browser to begin testing and configuring your display. Let's do that now. This thumbnail at the top center here shows the last image sent to your display. We can send a clock face by choosing the plugin setting the style and color we'd like, and then pressing update now. The image plugin will let you upload a photo and have that rendered onto the display. Fun fact, this uses something called the Floyd Steinberg Dithering algorithm from 1976. Yes, that's an algo invented 50 years ago.
If you found your clock time displayed was wrong, you'll want to head to the settings and then update your time zone and also how often the display should update the information. I also like to boost the saturation, sharpness and brightness of the display for a better image quality. Let's look at one more plugin, the weather one. Here, you'll need to select a location for the forecast and change the units of measurements to suit your preference. That's just a few of the plugins currently available and there are more being developed and added as time goes on. Inky Pie is a fantastic project and I am very grateful to all of the people contributing to it. Thank you so much for watching right through until the end. If you'd like to support project videos on this channel like this one, then please consider having a little look at my Patreon page. See what other projects I've got in my back catalogue and if you like it, don't forget to press like and hit subscribe. It's a great way of helping me out. And share this video with anyone you know who might want to build one of their own, or if you're lucky, one for you. Otherwise, until the next video, do some good and ciao for now. You're gonna need a well how to build these color e-ink paper digital display dashboards. <laughs>